Okay, people, this is a YouTube video on potatoes. Once again, yes, I know. Uh, but you're going to like this one. This is on peeling versus not peeling and the way to prepare them and to figure out how much you're going to need and how far they'll go when you go to pack them into the jars. This is basically uh, a beginner's, if not a refresher. If you notice by the picture here, I've got things blotted out. Uh, so that way nobody can say, oh, there's copyright issues. that You took this directly out of the book. Uh, if you look at this, it says wash your potatoes, you drain them, you peel them, and wash them again. I wash mine constantly just to be safe. Now, when it comes to canning, I use two, yes, two 23-quart pressure canners. Each one of these will do seven quarts. So basically, I can do 14 quarts at a time. A lot of people don't have the luxury of actually having two of these on the stove at the same time. Not only are these expensive to get they hold up rather well I'm not saying these are the best because uh, all American cookers I believe it is are in my opinion the best especially since they're made in America I like those the best anyway we're gonna get on with it now if you have a lot of potatoes to wash here's what I do you don't have to do this everybody's got an opinion I use a double basin sink a lot of people are thinking, wow, this is crazy. You're using a double basin sink. Actually, you can fit a lot of potatoes in a double basin sink. The biggest thing with these is you need to make sure you clean them really well. You clean them with regular detergent or you can clean them with bleach. You've got to clean everything, even the little strainers in the bottom. It's very crucial to do this if you're going to be cleaning your potatoes because you don't want any of that nasty stuff to be canned. Now, as you can see here by the blue arrow, this is this whole area needs to be cleaned real good. Sponge might not cut it. Uh, you might want an abrasive pad like a green pad that they have in order to clean this all up. You want to get all that crud out of there. It's very important to do that if you're going to be using this method. Like I said, you're going to get a lot of potatoes if you decide to use a double basin sink. It actually works out perfect. Now this is what stops the water from going down the drain. A lot of people call this a strainer, a lot of people call it a stopper. It all You can call it whatever you want. There's a lot of different terms you can use. Basically, the bottom line is it stops the water from going down the drain and strains as well. Now as you can see in this picture here, we have a picture of a stopper. It actually consists of just three parts, if you can imagine that. And I'm going to show you the areas that you need to be concerned about when it comes to cleaning. Uh, the other area that you need to be concerned about, highlighted by this red arrow here, happens to be right next to your drain. Uh, you can see a lot of places there'll be uh, putty. Uh, it depends on how your drain is set up. You just want to make sure you get that nasty crud out of there too. Uh, it'll be difficult to get in there, but you can get in there to get at it and to get that nasty stuff removed because your potatoes are going to be soaking in this. And it's not that hard to do, believe it or not. Now, if you remove the rubber piece, highlighted by the blue arrow, from your strainer, this is where you want to clean, around the bottom of this rubber piece and around the sides. And where the red arrow is, where the, that shows where the rubber piece used to be, you want to actually clean around that. That's highlighted by the red arrow. You want to make sure you get that good and clean as well. Now, if you flip your rubber piece over, highlighted by the red arrow, you're going to see a little bit of crud in there. Yes, I did that intentionally. I got an extra strainer. You want to make sure you get that clean. And if you flip your strainer over, you want to make sure you clean in here, highlighted where the red arrow is. You want to make sure you get this nice and clean. Don't worry about taking this apart. It's rather easy to do. There's nothing to put in the back together either. Now you have a decision to make to peel or not peel your potatoes. I personally like to peel my potatoes because it actually highlights the bad spots in the potatoes. Uh, I've seen people actually just wash, rinse these a couple times, cut them cube and throw them in and let it go with that. I personally, I don't like that method. Now keep in mind, I'm not knocking, uh, not peeling your potatoes. Believe me, I'm not. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for me, me personally. If I go ahead and expose areas like this, I can cut them out before I chop them into cubes. That way I, I've got big hands, so it makes it easier for me to get these bad spots out before I start cutting them into cubes. It makes it a lot easier for me. So it's all a matter of personal preference. Like I said, you do not have to peel them. If you want to, you can. Blue Book says to peel them, but uh, a lot of people don't. 
it's all up to you. The other thing you have to worry about is whether or not you have large or small pieces. Highlighted by the right arrow, you see the small piece here. This piece will cook rather quickly when you put it in your pressure cooker. Not that that's a bad thing. Depends on the potatoes you're using. I like to go with the cubes or cube size or rectangular size and they take up less space in the jar as you can see from this picture. So it's really not that hard to cut them into cubes. Now other people like to have them into french fry shape as you can see here. Either one is just fine. It all depends on how many you want to get into a jar. If you cut them like this a lot of them will be below the water level. They'll be smaller so you don't have anything sticking above the water level. It all depends. It, 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 it's all a matter of personal preference on what you want to do. I have talked to several people that do canning, uh, especially some old timers, people in their 70s and 80s. And as you can see, I have two blue ice packs here. This keeps the water cold. And believe it or not, it actually firms up your potatoes. If you've got a potato that's a little bit mushy to the touch, or it's getting close to that time where it's kind of borderline, where you might think it might be going bad or something like that, this will actually firm your potatoes up. Of course, you're going to cut them and prepare them and you're just going to throw them in the water with the ice packs. You don't have to do this. Just regular cold water will work. I go a little bit overboard sometimes. Depends on how you want to look at it. Now if you look, you'll see the potatoes on the left sitting on one side. I'll put them on a plate, cut them up into their cubes after they've been peeled, of course, and then I'll throw them on the right side, as you can see here. Now when you're using a double basin sink, believe it or not, it does make it easier. You can see my ice packs on the left-hand side. And what I do is I rinse these out and make sure I get all the nasties off of them, anything that's floating around. And I'll fill the other side up with water, again, with the strainer in there. And then what I'll do is I'll just transfer all the potatoes over there, grab a clump uh, with your hands and put them in there. The more times you do this, the more stuff and the more dirt uh, and grime you're going to actually get out. Even though you've washed potatoes, I don't care how many times you do this, you're always going to find that there's something in there floating around or some nasties. So if you do this multiple times back and forth, uh, it makes a big difference. You don't have to. A lot of people rinse them off once and just cut them up and throw them in and let them go with that. You can. Whatever you want to do. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. This is an 8 quart stock pot. You can get this uh, at Walmart, Dollar Store, Family Dollar as you can see in this picture. Now a lot of people are saying okay that's fine 8 quart. Believe it or not if you cube your potatoes this will hold exactly 8 quart maybe a little bit more. So if you're new to canning or uh, you don't know how many potatoes you're actually going to get or how many quarts you're going to get this is actually perfect for that. It's kind of like a measuring cup. It works out perfect. Uh, if you don't believe it, give it a try. It actually, it, it does. It works out perfect. You won't be disappointed in it. Not at all. Now, this is what it looks like when they're all cut and they're all cleaned and they're sitting at the bottom of the rivet on this 8 quart and that's exactly 8 quart. And to give you an idea of how much you're going to le get left over out of this 8 quart, now I did exactly 8 quarts and this is what I had left over, what's sitting on the plate to the left. So there's very, very little waste. If you're new to this, or this is even a refresher for those of you more experienced, uh, you'll notice there's a big difference. So you can tell what you have and what you don't have, and you don't have much waste. Now if you look at this picture, you're going to see some black marks. Uh, they're highlighted by your red arrows. Now if you process your potatoes, you do a lot of peeling and a lot of cubing and cutting and you put them in a container and you cover them with water and put them in the refrigerator they'll be fine for the next day. Yeah, they're actually good for a couple days. So if your hands were all raw like mine get uh, or they're starting to hurt, yeah I know I'm wanting like a little baby, <laughs> uh, you can get away with putting them in a container but you gotta make sure you cover them with water. If you do not you end up with black spots like this. Uh, they, they're perfectly fine, but I end up throwing them out anyway. I want everything to be perfect when I actually do my potatoes. One thing I cannot stress enough, it's very important to label your cans. If you label them, you know what kind of potatoes they are, when they were canned, whether or not they were raw packed, hot packed, cold packed, however you want to phrase it. There's different terminologies, uh, whether you use lemon or not, and if you can these into a one pint container. This is actually enough for one person, maybe a little bit more. As you can see here, these are small 
little pieces and they were in a pint a jar and this is how much actually gets produced now you can use larger pieces in a pint jar you just won't get as many in there and this is what it looks like some of you might think well that looks a little nasty those are onions in there uh, this is absolutely a wonderful meal you will not be uh, disappointed if you use a pint and have a couple hamburgers something like this this is just a little bit of of an example show you how far they'll actually go a pint jar this is what it looks like on a plate and like I said if you use bigger chunks you're gonna have less space in your jar but you are gonna have yourself a good meal as I have stated before it's very important to make sure you date and make sure you put what kind of potatoes that you have on your can lids this way if there's a problem you can go back yeah I know I, I I'm repeating myself this is very crucial to do this that way you can rotate your stock and you know which one's the oldest and you'll know basically which one you want to grab now if you notice on these they don't say lemon I've noticed a big difference if you don't use lemon uh, they turn a little bit yellow if you don't use lemon but it basically it's an appearance issue that's all it is whether you use lemon or not that's your choice if you look at your uh, ball blue book it does say that you can use lemon but you don't have to well that's about it for the video I hope uh, somebody learned something out of this and I welcome any comments or suggestions thanks for watching